Thank you. It took a while, so uh, we're running over already, but John, without further ado, over to you, and thanks for the introductions. Thank you. Okay. Kyle, I'm going to learn something, hopefully. So, voice search. So, um, as it mentioned in the notes, I'm the head of uh, an SEO department at Roast. It's a Roast of Performance Marketing Agency, so SEO, paid search, paid social, um, but we're we're quite quickly moving into the, uh, the voice space, so developing actions and skills. So the topic today is kind of avoiding brand extinction, and I guess the brands that we've been talking to were responsible for their traditional organic and paid search, and so we know that there's a kind of a different playing field. So traditionally with web, we've got 10 organic links or 100 links, depending on how many uh, you look at on per page. If you're not achieving results by organic, you've always got the option to have a paid listing at the top. Um, it's generally easy to rank your own brand terms because you have a website already. And there's always the chance that you know the user can click through to a web page to get more information. Um, but looking at voice, it's obviously a different playing field. So straight away, generally, apart from a few times when you do local search, you're only going to get one result. So if you were ranking two, three, or four on organic, on voice, there's going to be literally no visibility there. There's no choice for the user to say, I want to listen to uh, the second result, the third result, the fourth result. At this moment, there's no paid option, so if you're not, the result which the device gives you, you can't pay for that. And at this moment in time, it's a little bit harder to gain results because brands don't have actions and skills already, and the, the, the tools from a development point of view are there from Google and, uh, and Alexa, but maybe from the tracking point of view and the research point of view, of what people are searching for, how many people are searching for, there's absolutely nothing at the moment when we come to voice search. And also, there's generally limited information that one of these devices is going to give back to you. As mentioned before, you don't want to sit there listening to lots of information. So, a couple of examples of uh, kind of pose, problems that you could propose is, say for example, if you Coca Cola and you ask Google how is Coca Cola made, uh, it will read from Wikipedia. So, in this example here, Coca-Cola don't have any choice over the, um, what's being read out, and somebody might quickly change the information on the Coca-Cola page, and then it might actually say something that Coca-Cola don't, don't, don't want to hear. Um, second, if maybe you're not recommended, so what's the best mix to go with rum, and Google's decided to read out this answer, and Coke, not Coca-Cola isn't mentioned at all. Third example, which is incorrect information. So this has changed actually recently, but this is an old result. So you asked how many calories, it said 140. It's actually 139 calories in a can of Coke. But this one website, which Google was using to reference, had the wrong information. And then lastly, um, maybe you're not going to control the conversation. So if you want to make a chocolate cake with Coca-Cola, I was struggling for examples here. Um, it may say, well, we've got a recipe and it's going to take you into this recipe. So the BBC recipe is now controlling the conversation back and forth. So for a brand, there's lots and lots of um, problems which aren't anything new because these are the same problems that they've had on web, but now on voice it's a little bit more uh, daunting because there's only one result. So the big, and this statistic is a little bit of a bugbear for a few people in the SEO industry. And I understand why this has come about because there is no data at this moment in time. And if you actually look into the article, a good article from a lady called Rebecca Sentence, she actually goes into the, the history of where the statistic came from. And it comes from somebody talking about Baidu and it's also trying to apply one statistic to every single type of search as well. So, it's the same when we were looking at web years ago. So when everybody said, oh, we're going to move from web to mobile, that is the case for some of our clients. Our clients might have 70, 80% of their website traffic will come from mobile, but some of our insurance clients is far less. So trying to apply one statistic to kind of every type of vertical and every type of search is a little bit difficult. But at this moment, it's probably the best stat to use because we don't have a tool like this. So for anybody who doesn't recognize this, this is the Keyword Planner from uh, Google AdWords. And this essentially gives us in SEO and PPC an estimate to say, every single month there's 450,000 searches of travel insurance. Pinch and salt with the numbers, but it does allow us to get kind of an understanding of where there is volume and where there isn't volume. So at the moment, none of these tools that are out there will split that down into how many of those searches are voice and how many of those searches are where. 
So until we kind of have that, brands and brands that I'm talking to at the moment are struggling to say, well, how many people are searching on voice? Do we need to actually start to optimise for voice a little bit more? And so hopefully towards the end of the presentation today, I'll show you how we are actually getting some numbers out of the tools that are available, and then we'll be able to go back to brands and say, well, in this set of key phrases, voice search is about 20%, or maybe it's 70%. So the first thing we, we look to do, and this is very much reporting an old technique from SEO through to voice, is uh, opportunity. So the majority of the way that voice search works at this moment is that Google will create um, feature snippets or answer boxes. So this is where we ask the question, what's the best fast? Sorry, I don't know how to help with that. <laughs> you didn't? Like you my name. Name. Are you not allowed to touch it? To unmute it, press the button on the back of Google. So, so um, what is the best Dyson vacuum? And it's extracted this little snippet of information from this website. And it's done this because they probably structured their data in a specific way with like an unordered list or numbered points. And when we ask Google the same question, it will start to read out the same information. So on a web point of view, we've got tools like Stat. So Stat is basically a ranking tool. It'll track our positions in search engine rankings on a daily basis. But it'll also then parse the results and it'll say, for best forex trading platform, the number one result is an answer box. So for my client, I can tell them where the answer boxes are, who is occupying the answer box, if it drops off on a daily basis, so I can track. Whereas on voice, we, we don't have any of these tools. So uh, at Rose, we try to create a little tool. So we call it the voice search ranking report. And essentially, we take a key phrase list, we take it through the Google Assistant, we record the information that it gives us, at the same time, we get the web results, and then we kind of compound the data. So a very simplistic view is, if the key phrase was um, OK Google, savings account, interest rate, Google can't respond. But what we find is that there is a web result, but this is an answer box table. And Google can have problems reading out tables. It's getting better. Other key phrases, they'll match. So they'll be exactly the same what we see on web, what we saw on um, uh, voice. Um, but then we also see sometimes that there'll be a different answer on web to a different answer on voice. So maybe Google's got three or four different answer boxes that it likes to use on web, but this one's the best one for voice. So we started to run this data and we started to learn like where voice is, is being read out, where it isn't. And the best way to do that was we ran 10,000 key phrases and we're doing this every quarter. And we basically read line by line the data that comes out of it and then we're starting to understand what Google uses, what the different platforms they're referencing their data from, when they're going to the web versus where they're going to Google My Business. And we categorise these up into uh, 23 verticals. So one example for FMCG, we asked 500 questions, so like where can I buy bread or what's the ingredients for a certain recipe, etc. And for half the key phrases, Google could answer, and for half the key phrases, it didn't answer. So this is us starting to find opportunity. So this is just the same as us typing and then saying, oh, there's not really a good result here. Maybe we can produce a piece of content, put it live, and gain that search engine ranking. But when it does start to answer, what we actually start to see is that it uses lots of different types of results. So going back to web, we've got like images, videos, normal HTML pages, PDFs. And it's the kind of same idea as so we can start to classify results. So I think we've seen so far 25 different types of results. This is all very much Google-based. And overall, the majority of questions that we asked over 10,000, no response. The next most popular one was an answer box. So we just read out an answer box. And then it was lots of location results. But what we can see is that it might have flight search. It might have uh, traffic information. It might uh, do a translation. And so this is where we're going through to different businesses and different verticals to start to say, well, you need to run this research on key phrases that are relevant to you and then start to understand well, what's happening. So uh, and so it's hard probably to see this, but at the top we've got transport, property, technology, fashion, music. The majority here is red, so Google can't answer. So if I was working in one of those industries, I'd be thinking about how can I provide an answer to those questions? Whereas at the bottom, hotels, restaurants, uh, Google can handle those results pretty well because it's just referencing Google My Business, which they've got lots of data on. And so for Amazon, they have a partnership with VX. 
So anything location results uh, based or restaurants um, is pretty well handled. So therefore, your tactics in those verticals is actually to just optimize Google My Business and you don't really want to think about the web publishing side of things too much. And, and as we mentioned, I'm running these reports on a regular basis so you can then start to see in this example for utilities, uh, when we ran it earlier in the year, uh, less than half was answered and now Google's getting better and better. So we'll start to see areas where either Google make a technology shift or maybe websites will kind of start to pick up and give more information out there and the gap starts to close. So a quick summary of all those results types is essentially there's going to be no answer, it's going to read out an answer box. Knowledge graph is where it's kind of a piece of data, so like where is somebody from, how old is somebody, how tall is the Apple Tower, etc. Google My Business or, or Yext in Amazon's case. And then the other thing is a, a built-in feature, so we'll talk about that. Or sometimes, and this is my area of interest, is where Google might suggest an action. So these are the main focus going on. Um, so how to gain actual voice results. So if you're looking at answer boxes, first of all, because those are the, 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 the most prominent type of result that we've seen so far, um, it's not only good for voice, but it's also going to be great for web. So this is an example of a client of ours experience. So lots of research, people wanting to find out about how they can improve their credit score, etc. Um, and for those from an SEO background, hopefully um, you'll know about some of these, but essentially it's, you need to research to find out what people are searching for. So there's a great tool called Answer to the Public, and you basically put in a seed key phrase and it'll give you a combination of everything that related to that. You can also then use your internal site search, your internal Google Analytics, or you can go on PPC and bid on what, where, when, on broad match modifier with your product, and then you'll naturally start to gather the data. Uh, once you know what the questions are, pretty simple, answer the question. So be explicit in your answering. Don't give a roundabout business perspective. You need to answer specifically what Google wants to see. And you need to use the correct HTML. So if it's like, how do I fix uh, X, Y, Z? You need to give bullet points, or you need to give an, an ordered list. Where if it's more like, how do I improve my credit score? You're going to come back with a paragraph of information. And then it's just more about general good SEO on your website. So make sure that it's a unique piece of copy. It's containing the key phrases. And generally, the stronger your domain, the more likely you're going to appear. Um, but key to this is you need to track. Because you may gain an answer box, and the answer box will then leave you, and Google will pick somebody else. So you need to keep refining on a regular basis. So there's lots of information out there on the web, and videos and guides about how to do this. Um, but the area that's not been looked into too much is around about actions. So actions on Google, skills on Amazon. And essentially, we know that these devices will come with built-in things like maps, uh, translations, uh, calendars. So any, if, if your business kind of works in this vertical, like you're uh, producing weather information, you're not going to have much luck because the weather information is going to come back to you straight away. It's highly unlikely that they're going to suggest to, to talk to like the Met, etc. Um, Whereas Google Actions is where we've got an option to maybe say, maybe I can provide within my action some information. So once you've created an action, I'm sure there's going to be lots of talks about, um, about coming up with a use case. Um, but discoverability is a little bit hard at the moment. So uh, we had a slide before saying, you know, you need to explain to customers, to, to everybody about what your invocation phrase is. So we've seen examples like this on the tube, on the tube adverts, we've seen um, uh, YouTube pre-rolls, I've seen uh, advertisements in uh, uh, digital outdoor display saying this is the invocation phrase, which is a really good one here, uh, Alexa play Disney hits. But you can always put that on your website and email. And the other way that people might find you is via the, the directory, so that's on your phone or on the, uh, the app. Um, but taking this back to, to searching, there's also two different ways of invocating an action. So the first one is that the user has learned that the train line, so they might have seen a tube ad, they might have heard a Spotify advert, and they say, okay, Google talks to the train line, and it opens. And then the second way is implicit. So in this example, okay, Google, what time does the train from Manchester to London leave? Now, Google probably can't answer that straight away because it's quite a complicated query, but the train line action may contain the answer to that. 
And so the model that Google are going for is that they're saying we can't answer everything, but we're going to harness the information that was it, which is within um, Google Actions and probably point you through to that. So it's the same uh, on Alexa with can fill uh, intent, um, but it's, it's been around on Google a little bit uh, uh, before. So we've been testing this out to say basically see can we start to be the suggested uh, answer. So this is a, an experiment we've been running. So we've got quite a lot of these different Google Actions and, and uh, that are just looking at different key phrase sets. So this one's house prices, so pretty simple. You can go in and you can ask what is the average house price in a particular location. It'll tell you the average house price in Coventry is £150,000 and it's £3 million pounds around here. So, same methodology we wanted to see for those key phrases where Google couldn't answer it. Once we publish this, does Google then come back and, and reference ours? So, again, using the same tool, we asked about 200 questions and about 150 of the questions. Google couldn't answer that, so that's lots of different locations around the UK. Um, but around about 50 of them, we did answer them, so we just read out their uh, features snippet. So we launch it on the third day, and then pretty much straight away, Google actually says, yes, there is an action that can actually help here, and this action um, basically is the, the house prices one. So what would happen in this instance would be you'd say, what's the average house price in commentary? Google will say, uh, okay, for that, you can talk to house prices. Is that okay? The user says yes, and then it basically would deep link you into the, the action and straight away it will give you that commentary uh, example. The other benefit of, of this rather than an answer is when it reads out an answer, it reads the answer out and then it stops. Whereas you've now got the user to come into your action and so then you've got them in their conversation. So in my example, it then goes, do you want to check another location? Or you could say, do you want to compare this location to another? So you've now got them within your, your action, you've got the data. Last little bit here was that we didn't train this key phrase, and so that was just a, a variation of how people could say, what is the average house price in the area of Coventry, etc. So you need to try and train your, um, when you're building your Google Actions, to think about all the different combinations. And that's where that testing, which we uh, mentioned before, having offline testing with individuals, you can then record all the different things that they say. So one of the benefits of doing this is that you then start to get the data. So in the, the back end of Google uh, Actions Console, you start to see data like how many people have used your action, uh, how many conversations they've had, what's the average length of, of conversation, and you also get information on what key phrase they used to find your action. So did they use um, uh, kind of the brand one or did they use one of the, com the, the key phrases we mentioned before? So this is the first time we're actually seeing, as far as I can see, like actual voice data. So in this example, for my action, it only covered about 400 locations. So on web, I know from AdWords, there's around about 4,500 people searching on a monthly basis for these key phrases. And so far, just on my voice, in this voice action at the same time, is 1,500. And that's without even my action being suggested for all of the locations. So for some of the key phrases, it's still suggested and it's still read out a web result. So in this example, I can go back to the client and say, so at the moment, it's around about 22%, which it, it is better kind of numbers than we've ever had before. And what we'll probably start to find is that I've run this on different um, key phrases for different actions that we've got, and it's like 2%. And then I've run another one's entire. So it shows you how it depends on what the key phrase is and how conducive that key phrase is to, to voice and the context. So what would I suggest you to do? So check your voice results, basically. Um, so you could use some, a tool like ours. You could sit there and literally Talk, but it get pretty boring. Echo Sim is a web-based version of Alexa, so it might be easy to do that. And then also Google Allo, which Allo, how I to say that. There's a web version of that, so you can quickly type, and that talks to the Google Assistant. So you can sit there and ask maybe the top questions that you know your business wants to answer, and then classify them. Classify them into somebody's answered already. Google can't answer it, or Google uses one of those. Uh, particular types of results like Google My Business. 
And if there's an opportunity, I'd straight away look at answer boxes, so uh, web, but also look at Google My Business, and as I mentioned about Amazon and CX. And then start to think about an action and uh, the creation of an action or a skill and what the use case is. A lot of companies are just starting off with a simple FAQ. So I think before there was an example of Halifax Jargon Buster. So the Halifax Jargon Buster is just what is stamp duty, and then it reads out a really long explanation of what stamp duty is. So it's probably because they didn't have the funding or the, the buying to do the full blown Halifax banking, you know, how much money did I spend last night? So I wouldn't just create an action or a skill at the moment just to block out key phrases. I think you need to think about the use case, and I suppose we'll be talked about that later today. Dev, design it, test it, launch it, and with anything like SEO or voice, there needs to be a loop back. So did I gain the results? Yes, no, if I didn't, check the results again, make amendments to my um, action or skill, or make amendments to my um, web-based, and then keep going on a regular basis, and then try to work out what works and what doesn't work. So, final takeaways, uh, yeah. So there's no tool at the moment publicly available like Stat or um, like AWR, and many of these SEO tools that have been going around for years, or a tool from Google, so like Search Console gives you data back on where you're ranking on web, but there's nothing at this moment. Um, check your voice results to see if there is an opportunity. If you're a hotel or if you're a restaurant, maybe there's not as much opportunity as if you're uh, working in finance or FMCG. Um, there's more to gain voice results with answer boxes. So if you Google voice search SEO or SEO voice search, everybody, all the articles are just going on about answer boxes. But I think there's actually the fact that Google and Alexa are using lots of different data points to gather the results. Therefore, you can't just concentrate on web. And the last two, find your use case, which I suppose everyone will be talking about today. Don't just make one that's going to answer questions. And, and as ever, track and optimise on an ongoing basis. Okay? Thank you very much.